Hey everyone, following the uh, the Leaf Boston game 2 of the first round series last night, I got in a, an argument with my uncle about the importance of advanced stats and why some stats are outdated in terms of judging a player. He brought up plus minus as a good indicator of good defensive play. Now, I am of the mindset of you look at Corsi, Fenwick, Zone Starts, PDO, stuff like that, and that's how you can tell who is effective on the ice and when I brought that up he didn't even know what it was he said he never heard of it before so I thought if he doesn't hear about it there's tons of people who haven't heard about it so I'm gonna quickly touch on three major points Corsi Fenwick and zone starts in this in this video and just it's the bare minimum so if you already know advanced stats this video is not for you this is for someone who has no clue what advanced stats mean and how they affect the game so we'll start it off. We, I have three defensemen, Ron Hainsey, Travis Durham, and Jake Gardner, all Leaf defensemen. And we're going to quickly compare them. So Ron Hainsey was a plus 30 this year. So if you look at that, you're like, oh, God, he's a great defensive defenseman. But then you, when you look into his advanced stats, it looks more like he was put in a position where he was just lucky and was on the ice when he was a uh, uh, talented scorer's put the puck in that, so he got a plus. So you look at his Corsi 4, this means anything directed towards the net. So shots blah, shots on net, shots towards the net that missed, and block shots. So anything you direct towards the net counts for a Corsi 4, you get a 1. Anything that's against it, which is in this column, means that a shot was directed towards the net. So if you're under 50%, as in this column for Corsi 4 percentage, it means when you're on the ice, more shots are being directed towards your net than the opponent's net, which is not good. Now, the key in, uh, one that I want to touch on is Corsi relative, which I think is a bigger indicator of how good you are, is compared to your teammates. This is, on average, this season, Ron Hainsey was a minus 4.2%, lower than everyone else in terms of directing shots towards the opponent's net. When he's on the ice, he is minus 4.2 worse than the average on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, Fenwick is basically the same thing as Corsi. You just take away... Uh, block shot so it's anything directed towards that via a shot on net or a missed shot so you see he gets slightly better but it's still not where you want it and all the columns fit in the same thing so shots on net shots on your own net uh your percentage and then your percentage relative to your uh your teammates so here is the other one i want to talk about because this can skew stats so if you're starting a lot in the defensive zone where in this column it's okay if you're like a minus one or minus two. Like, for example, there's defensemen who will start 60% in the defensive zone. So by that number, it's okay because uh, you're always starting in your own end most of the time. So it's hard to shot, get shots on net when you're starting and has to carry the puck up the entire length of the ice. So, But with him, with Ron Hainsey, uh, he's almost even, he's standing slightly more in the defensive zone, but that's not enough to justify a 4.2. Now, we'll switch over to Travis Dermott, who's a, really, a rookie this year, really, because he played 37 games last year, so he's technically not a rookie, but, like, this was his first full season. So you look at him, and his advanced stats are really good. Like, he's 55% Corsi 4, his Corsi relative is 5% better than his teammates, same thing with Fenwick, but you go over to the defensive zone starts, and he's close to 60%. So that gives you an indicator, like, maybe that's the matchup he's getting. He's always setting in the offensive zone, therefore shots are going to be directed towards net for him. So it would be interesting, maybe year three or four, if he's splitting that evenly, where uh, where he's at. You can see he's pretty even this season, and it's a good indicator because even, even though it's 30 games, he uh, had great numbers too. So hopefully it's a trend, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, Jake Gardner is a polarizing figure in uh, in the Toronto Maple Leafs world. Like, every, there's people who love him, there's people who hate him. I personally have mixed opinions about him. I don't think he's as bad as people say he is, and I also don't think he's as good as people say he is. But advanced stats wise, he's very consistent. He splits it almost 50 50 in terms of offensive and defensive zone starts. And his advanced numbers are always pretty decent. His Corsi 4 is normally above. Uh, 50% besides two years right here when he was young. And uh, he's normally always above, or actually he has always been above his teammates in terms of Corsi relative. Like this season, amazingly, even though he was under 50%, he was almost 14% better than his teammates. That just shows how bad the Leafs were that season, although he did only play 12 games. So that that probably has something to do with it. But over the course of his career, 
3% better than his teammates. He's split almost evenly over the course of his career, over 50% for his career. So it's it's an indicator. It's not the be-all, end-all, but it's a good point to look at. So that's basically it for me. Um, like I said, these are the basics, so anyone who already knows advanced stats, this won't apply to you. But if you don't know anything about advanced stats, hopefully this video helped you out a little bit, and uh, thanks for watching.